Here we go! My friends, speedrunning is truly amazing. If you're watching this channel, you probably agree with that sentiment. But why? What makes speedrunning so special? Is it the wonderful community, always willing to welcome, teach, and accept others, even at their worst or lowest points in life? Is it the stunning technical prowess, intelligent problem solving of the speedrunners, breaking down a game's code to a place of deeper understanding than even the developers would ever have imagined? Is it the healthy dose of nostalgia, giving us all an excuse to play or relish in the wonderful yesteryears of a favorite video game? Well, these are certainly parts of it, but to me, it's the stories. In July 2019, legendary speedrunner Mark Rutsu demolished his Nintendo 64 console after setting an incredible world record on GoldenEye's Silo Agent stage, vowing to never play the game again. However, one year later, due to the strange circumstances of the world around him, he returned. What happened next can only be described as truly remarkable. This is the story of Mark and Dam Double O Agent. But here's a quick story before we get to all that. The story of optimizing my pocket situation with the Ridge wallet. The beautiful, industrial, sleek, optimized wallet. Truly, I keep my wallet on me even while gaming. It's not worth risking misplacing it otherwise. And I used to bump and bonk my arms into my old bulky wallet all the time, sometimes even losing runs because of it. But this is no longer a problem with the wonderful Ridge wallet. You can barely see it's there, it has a low profile, and it feels great in my pocket. Ridge has a ton of styles you can choose from, they're super durable and have a lifetime warranty. They can fit up to 12 cards and a clip for cash, and they have RFID blocking technology so your credit cards don't get sniped by some bad dude in the grocery store. You can get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash stay true. That's ridge.com slash stay true and use my code stay true. Link in description. Thanks. Some of the speedrun video footage you're about to see was recorded off fuzzy, rolling VHS tapes and might contain flashing scenes or frames unpleasant to viewers with photo sensitivity. Consider yourself warned on that front. I've dimmed it down and done other stuff to make it less egregious, but yes, adjust your screen accordingly or do what you have to do. Okay, here we go. So, what's the greatest record set in the history of GoldenEye 007 speedrunning? It's a question you may have asked yourself at some point, and if you ask me, I would make the case for damn Double Agent 155. So in September 2010, after beginning to make a name for himself and scoring a handful of good records, the nascent Mark Rutsu would strike up a rivalry with the more long-established GoldenEye speedrunner and champion of the game at the time, Dave Clemens. After Mark became the fourth player to tie the world record on Damn Double Agent 157, the two would embark on a battle to achieve the untied Damn Double 156, with Clemens emerging victorious on September 22nd. Mark accepted his defeat, moving on to play Train, Bunker 2, and filling out the rest of his times page. However, in January of 2011, Mark would revisit the Damn stage to see if a couple months break would help reignite his fire. And indeed, it did. Mark would tie the 156 on January 24th, and then the following day he thought to himself, well, I'm playing pretty well, why not play for one more day and see what happens? And oh boy, did it happen. Mark struck this damn double agent 155 with a perfect 8-0 boost ratio, 7 guard boosts and 1 box boost, strafed as crisply and executed as perfectly as you could possibly imagine. The boost ratio is incomprehensible as the basement section is full of guards eager to back boost you and pass you away. An experienced dam player might escape the basement on 10%, maybe 15% of reasonable attempts, most of which will have 3 or 4 back boosts usually. 
So to take advantage of the god run with no back boosts and manage to not choke either the last two alarms or the doors, the run can only be described as divine. And we would find out just how divine over the next few years. Mark would actually go on to untie Dan's secret agent 116, another insane untied, only three days later. And yes, this terrible video footage is the only footage that was ever made showing these records. Mark recorded his gameplay on an old fuzzy VHS tape, and there was some issue with PAL to NTSC conversion as well, and then he captured the recorded footage with some 2008-era cell phone or webcam. I used to resent this immensely, that these all-time great world records were captured in this terrible quality, with many frames actually missing from the footage. However, all this time later, it kind of adds to the story in some dark, twisted way. As the legend goes, on his way to achieving these records, the 19-year-old Mark Rutsu was playing so much Goldeneye that he did not see the sunlight for a period of three months. This is somewhat believable, as Scandinavia and Denmark only get seven or less hours of daylight in the winter months and 17 or more hours of darkness. And it's not uncommon for speedrunners to sleep through the daylight hours during their most unhealthy grinds. However, some do consider this aspect of Mark's damn grind to be apocryphal. But what is definitely true is that damn double agent 155 would go on to establish itself as the greatest world record ever set. Through to the beginning of the year 2017, not one single player had tied 155, and more incredibly, not one single player had even scored a 156, a time still held only by Clemens. Indeed, the rivalry between Clem and Mark was so far ahead of its time that despite dozens of great speedrunners joining and making a name for themselves in the game of Goldeneye over those years, not one single one was able to get even a mere 156. Damn Double O 155 would make it to six years as an untied world record, a feat only shared with one other record, Perfect Ace's Jungle Secret Agent 53. And so, becoming the longest standing untied world record in the history of Goldeneye, the question was raised, who would be the one to tie Damn Double O 155? But Mark's own story would continue during this time. One particularly pivotal moment in Mark's story would be this video, uploaded in 2012, an apartment tour as a prelude into a new untied world record. This is of course the infamous video where he shows his kitchen and makes this declaration about his dishes. Um, I haven't done the dishes since Patrick was here. He was here, um, what was it? Oh yeah, August the 28th. So it's like a bit more than a month. <laughs> I've come to feel bad in a way for making a meme out of this video, because when Mark shared it, it was only intended for the few dozen GoldenEye speedrunning community members at the time. You know, kind of an in-joke, haha, look at how degen I've become on this grind. Uh, but it does come up later on, so I feel it's at least necessary to show again here. In any matter, the world record he would go on to show in this larger video would be Train Secret Agent 123, a truly amazing untied world record which would lower his own untied sweep on the train stage. This 123 is still the record on Train Secret Agent, despite both the agent and double O agent difficulties having been lowered twice in the years since. In fact, this Train Secret Agent is still currently the sixth oldest record in all of Goldeneye, which is absolutely insane considering the complexity of the level, and how complex stages are usually the more difficult ones to optimize and therefore have the most room for improvement. Even more, five of the game's seven oldest records as of this video, late 2020, were set by Mark Rutsu. So that should show you just how insane of a player the guy is, and especially was in this 2010 to 2013 era. His two oldest records are in fact those insane Damn 00155 and Damn Secret Agent 116.
Now, I had this whole five minute segment about the truth contest in here, which I ended up cutting because honestly, at this point, it's just bringing up old drama to a large extent. But what's important is that there was this sort of internet subculture, which was somewhat popular around the early 2010s, in which readers of the truth contest entry, The Present by Michael Smith, believed themselves to be more enlightened and more aware of the world around them and would spread their message usually via YouTube comments to anyone who would listen. Perhaps they truly were more enlightened and aware, I don't really know. And Mark was one of these readers. Of course, others, the non-truth contest readers, don't like to hear that they're less enlightened and less aware about the world around them. So Mark's posting about the truth contest within the community led to threads about the truth contest or the ultimate truth becoming heavily trolled and satirized and led to Mark becoming vilified within the community. A role he himself embraced by changing his forum username to Darth Vader and changing his rankings color to hex code 666666. This kind of troll posting played itself out from about 2013 to 2017, but Mark does continue to play up this sort of villainous, edgy character within the community, as you'll perhaps see in a bit. Now we need to get back to Damn Double O Agent. In May and June 2017, live streams of Damn Double O Agent became popular, with some trying to figure out how to optimize the stage. One speedrunner, OHMSS, wondered way back in 2014 if there was somehow a way to lure a guard to open this somewhat slow upward moving door, something that might save around one second. And this question was revisited by speedrunner and TAS master Weister, who indeed discovered such a way to make this possible. By collecting two KF7s on your way to the basement, looking down pretty much the whole basement section and then firing 12 or 15 times in this specific area, you can lure a guard to open this door. With this newfound technique, yours truly would go on to become the first person in over six years to achieve a time of 156 on the stage. However, two weeks later, Perfect Ace, arguably the game's greatest player ever, finally was able to match Rutsu's damn double agent 155, after it had remained untied for 2,345 days, the longest reign in GoldenEye history. Further cementing Mark's original 155 as the greatest world record ever set in the game. The fact that it took six years for the best player ever to match the time, and he needed a one second time saver to do so, really shows just how cooked Mark's original 155 really was. And really, it'll be another three years before any current Untied has a chance of surpassing Mark's 155 for the longest standing Untied ever, something that quite frankly may never happen as records continue to be set, tied, and cycle in and out of the game. Truly the most remarkable record in the history of the game. The next piece of the Mark story begins only a few months later in fall 2017. Mark would be playing for Silo Agent 59, something that could be one of the new greatest GoldenEye World records ever set, if achieved. After over one year of playing for it, he still hadn't achieved the time. However, in June 2019, he had shared a screenshot, an alleged Silo 59 end screen, claiming he had achieved the run, but failed to record it. Now, while this would usually be an unbelievable claim, coming from Mark, it was totally believable. I mean, given his past proof issues, it was exactly the kind of thing we'd come to expect. However, about a month later, this led to one of the most incredible moments in the history of GoldenEye speedrunning when he would achieve this run live with his pal and fellow GoldenEye speedrunner, Tim Tams. Wait, wait. I think that's the I same. Think, I think I, that's the low 10. I think that's 10, 10. 10. 10.00, but who knows? <laughs> Duplicating a record as good as Silo 59, for proof, 
a record he had spent over a year going for, is simply beyond words and further adds to Mark's legend in the game. Mark would shortly thereafter record this video, destroying his Nintendo 64 in what many saw as his final retirement from the game. Countless speedrunners have attempted to retire time and time again, only to find their way back. But it really felt like this was the end of Mark's madness, the end of his chaotic greatness, his polarizing legend in GoldenEye speedrunning. But it wasn't. In October 2020, due to the ongoing and continuing global situation, it seems Mark was destined to return, announcing that he would reacquire streaming gear and start playing again to achieve new insane world records. Of course, with the one second time saver on Damn Double Agent, one of his signature levels, it was an inevitable matter of time. On November 13th, 2020, Mark shared this tweet, teasing an upcoming special stream. This was quickly sussed out as being a possible Damn Double Agent 154 reveal by some, and well, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, what's up then? What's up then? What's up then? Didn't play for a couple of days. I got this like seventh try or something. I played for five minutes. That's the f***ing untied right there. It says 154. I'm damn double agent. I f***ing cake that sh One particularly notable moment in the reveal video was this sort of mini apartment tour video calling back to Mark's original apartment tour from 2012. In this one, however, his kitchen was completely clean, dishes washed and put away neatly. Honestly, it's a true inspiration. Anytime someone tells you that people can't change, just show them this clip of Rutsu's kitchen from 2020 and it'll convince them otherwise. Well. Almost, you see. This wouldn't be a Mark Rutu story without some proof controversy. Some things do never change after all. Mark's first showing of the Damn 154 was his sort of epic director's cut with music and a kind of a backstory. However, he didn't post a version with in-game sound immediately. After 36 hours, the time was temporarily backrolled from the rankings for failing to meet the proof standards of posting a raw in-game version of the video. And this was done in hopes to motivate Mark to share the in-game sound version. Usually runners are given 48 hours to post an in-game sound version of their speedrun, so this was a little bit early, but since Mark claimed he had achieved the time on November 11th and got around to sharing it on the 15th, it was argued that he did have more than 48 hours to post a video. In any matter, the following day Mark did get around to sharing a video of the speedrun with in-game sound as he had recorded it, but there were a couple problems with it. For one, there's this donation bar over top of the gameplay. While not blocking any crucial information to the speedrun, it is still pretty troll, and does block at least some of the gameplay screen. For some reason it never occurred to Mark to make his layout slightly different, or to temporarily hide the donation bar during his off-stream attempts. Furthermore, it seems Mark was watching the Danish morning news, which was recorded permanently into the run. There's no other version of this speedrun. If you know Danish, please feel free to translate what they're saying on the news. I'm genuinely interested in hearing about it for a good laugh or maybe a meme. Anyhow, this has brought up questions about proof standards in 2020. Should we allow speedruns on the rankings, especially significant untied world records, which are usually held to the highest standard of proof, when there's background conversation over the run? It might sound silly at first, but what if someone was watching, say, a copyrighted movie or music video, and now there's no easy way to share the run on YouTube or even on the rankings, less the risk of getting some kind of copy strike or legal notice. 
Or perhaps what if someone was watching some sort of controversial misinformation video while achieving their speedrun, and now this information is sort of published permanently into the rankings upon submission of the score. Sure, you can just mute the audio, but then the overall quality of the video proof is degraded, since audio is indeed an important factor in determining legitimacy of a run. It'd be awfully convenient for someone to splice a speedrun, then embed a layer of copyrighted audio over the run to intentionally have the run pass proof call as muted, thus lessening the chances of their splice ever being detected. These situations are the sorts of things that must be considered when making rules to maintain the integrity of a ranking system. Sure, you can treat everything on a case-by-case -case basis, but that gets messy when people always find a way to toe the line and push boundaries. And I'm not implying that there's any movement pushing to remove Mark's Dam 154. It seems most people are fine accepting the run as is, but it is something interesting to consider as we go ahead with our future speedruns. At the end of the day, I see Mark as a relatable anti-hero, sometimes overtaken by the darkness and trollery and waste of productivity, but other times capable of achieving amazing things and inspiring many people. And I think that's so relatable to all of us. I don't think one side takes away from the other, rather they reflect the whole of one's being. The perfect imperfection of being human. And so that's the condensed story of Mark Rutsu's journey through GoldenEye speedrunning, culminating in his recent world record of Damn Double Agent 154. A truly remarkable record that, if his 155 is any indication, well, this one could stand the test of time. We'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching, my friends. Stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.